Yeah. All right. So this is our project. I'm JP Laurier. This is Shane. This is Jonathan. Yeah. Um, this is our RV wind turbine. Yeah. You could close that little job update window. So what we're planning on doing is innovating today's technology for a cleaner tomorrow through the use of wind turbines and innovating them to work with recreational vehicles to produce electricity in a greener, more efficient way. Okay, great. Typical uh, recreational vehicle uses around 1,200 to 1,400 watts. Um, it uses a 12V battery to power it, and the average vehicle, uh, RV travels around 65 miles per hour on its normal uh, road trip. Okay. That's the background information, right? Yes. A wind turbine uses the kinetic energy in the wind and converts it to mechanical energy, which we can then convert to uh, energy we can use in our homes. How, how does it do that? Um, there's a generator in it, and every time it turns, it powers the generator, and it'll pump electricity out to uh, a power station, which will then pump it out to the homes. Okay. Uh, there's three types of, uh, or I'm sorry, two types of um, of wind turbines. There's the VAWT, which is vertical axis, which it spins along, around a uh, center point. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the horizontal axis wind tur uh, turbine, which then spawn like uh, the normal wind turbine, which is uh, turns around just a single point, but horizontally. And the Savonius wind turbine, which is what we're using, to, we're basing our design <coughs> off of. Uh, it's it's typically smaller than the normal turbines, which would be great for you know portability and RV uh, right. and use in an RV. Mm -hmm. um, it spins along, around the long center, center <coughs> shaft, uh, with the length of the, each blade running against the center and spinning around it as its wind passes. Okay. And it'll generate generate electricity for the RV and its uses. So obviously, we can't have one of those giant 100 foot wind turbines on the top of an RV because that would be horrible. So we uh, decided to modify a smaller one that would work on an RV based off of the Savon Savonius wind turbine. Um, Shane will go into the specifics about that in a minute. However, we want to use it and place them in specific points on the RV so that as the RV travels, usually on road trips uh, across country, that it will pick up the wind as it travels and be able to convert that into energy. So basically, as it's driving, it's not only getting you from point A to point B, but also producing your electricity. Um, Jonathan will go over exactly where they are, or Shane will go to the All right. Basically, what we did was we, this is just a general proto, like just a rough sketch of it. Wow. Um, as the wind is going over the blades, it'll basically push the blade to the other side, and it'll catch this blade, and it'll keep turning and turning and turning and generally generating electricity. Uh, what this allows is it could be placed anywhere, pr practically anywhere on the RV where that gets wind, like on the sides, at the top, and the, under the grill, uh, maybe, maybe even under the RV if uh, we're crazy enough. Uh, um, yeah, so, um, and it'll be connected to a center shaft, which will then power the RV and power appliances like stoves, TVs, grills. We decided to have it go horizontally across because that way it wouldn't be as tall, so it could still go under uh, bridges and right. different low areas right. and still produce that electricity, the uh, efficient. Jonathan, what pitfalls oh, do you see? Oh, no, we're going to go. There's another shot. Oh, okay, we're go ahead. Right. Right. I'm sorry. <coughs> All right, so in order to get the most use of the this uh, Savius uh, bot, what we're going to use is a. Uh, at first, we're going to kind of write on this. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. First, we're going to encourage you to do that. So, right here. But then we realize that as the RVs are traveling, the winds can be spread out along here. Uh -huh. So, in order to get the maximum amount of uh, energy, we're going to put it around here. Inside and the grills. Inside the grill. How, how would that interfere with the uh, and operation of the engine? Because doesn't doesn't the engine need uh, an intake, air Actually, intake? Actually, 
we don't really need to uh, modify all that much. We can still use the same air that we use to power the RV to cool down the engine. Uh -huh. It will require slight modifications, but you can still recycle that same air. Right. So basically what we're doing, it's not so much modifying the entire engine of the RV, but just adding to it. Okay. And even if we uh, put some in there, it won't take up the entire grill space, so you still have an area that it'll go the air will flow through, mm -hmm. and as the wind, if the wind will go, if the wind doesn't stop at the uh, wind turbine, it goes through it, so it'll right. just still go through the engine even though it's hitting the uh, wind turbine. Oh, okay. And additionally, we're planning on putting another uh, uh, turbine right here, okay. not exactly on the back, but connected to right there. Right. Basically, we're going to set up so where there's always one blade above the RV and one underneath, right. so that you don't have the wind pushing on both. Mm -hmm but only on one, so that's continuous. Okay. Okay, um, what, what problems do you anticipate encountering trying to implement this technology? Anybody? Um, well, we're going to have to figure out, make it sturdy enough so that it can not only you know, produce the electricity, but we also need to make sure that it can withstand those winds <laughs> okay. of, you know, 65 miles. Okay. And we also have the problem of low hanging trees and uh, low, like low hanging buildings. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also planning to make it so that you push a button in the RV and it might swing down behind the like the the one in the rear right. might swing down behind the RV so you, so it doesn't really interfere with the trees or anything. Okay, go back to the um, slide where you're showing me the inventor file. Yeah. Oh, you got you got to close it up there. Up, up, yep. <laughs> okay, um, what's your next step here? Uh, our next step is to attach it, well, let's to refine the design, make it more portable, more functional. Do some more. research, see which um, experiments have shown which design would be best, whether or not we want it to be double bladed like that, or like this with one blade going up and next with one blade going down. Okay. And then we would attach a, uh, obviously a generator and uh, maybe implement it on a car or RV of some sorts to, uh, as a prototype Okay. Uh, to see where, where uh, how much power we would actually produce Right. Uh, when an RV or a car is typically, typically going at uh, 55, 60 miles an hour. Okay, Jonathan, what, um, as a group, as a team, what problems did you encounter and how did you resolve them? Uh, our first problem was putting the, as I said before, the turbine on the top. No, no, I'm talking about as a team, working together as a group. We haven't really encountered any problems. Yeah, we've been doing pretty well. Okay, so you guys worked from the beginning till now very nicely as a group. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, questions from the audience. Grant? Um, is the battery that you power the 12 volt and 12 volt is it the same that's in the engine? Uh, is, is the battery that um, is going to power this the same as the battery of, uh, of the RV? Possibly. We may end up powering the battery <coughs> so that um, it, we have enough uh, ener energy to uh, power the TV, the stoves, etc. We also might add another battery, an alternate battery, uh, that, can also, that can just go straight to the outlets on the outside that can power stoves, batter, or, uh, stoves TVs, and other appliances. Um, any other questions or comments? Manny? Oh, would this replace the alternator on a car? Because an alternator is the one thing that produces electricity. Uh, so Excellent question. No, because it would, if we decide to implement an alternate ba a second battery, it would not draw energy from the, the car's original battery. So, in other words, it would not replace the alternator if, it's, if there's an alternate battery. It would power the second battery but the first battery might either be powered by the same energy produced by the wind turbines or by the alternator as well. Uh, uh, question, Morgan? Yeah. It, do you plan on this affecting the amount of gas um, <coughs> being used throughout like the time of... Using Not directly, energy? because this only deals with the actual production of electricity. I mean, and it doesn't really affect how much gas mileage you use. If we were changing the engine, so much, like we had to modify the engine so that we could put these in there, then I might say yes, but since we don't have to, no. Um, questions? Um, could you, a little louder, please. Could you have another, like, separate turbine that 
keeps powering the actual engine battery instead of well not the for thing now. is that at slow speeds it might not be uh, worth the um, you, you have to be moving at 10 miles an hour to get a turbine yeah how, how did you figure that out was that from your reading and your research from my research yes okay anything less I than mean, 10 miles an hour is not worth well, I mean, it might move, but not enough to actually produce any amount of substantial electricity. Right. And certainly not and enough to... That's how to we did some of our calculations to realize that this is actually possible to produce. Okay, so <coughs> speaking of possibility of producing this, is this something that you feel would be cost effective? Uh, yes, because... Since or it's or a will only 1% of 1% of 1% of the entire population of the Earth would be able to afford something? Yeah, if it worked. Okay. This is very a uh, relatively inexpensive thing to implement. It's just um, why? Um, because it's very small. It doesn't require a lot of materials. Uh -huh. This could be a, either made out of plastic or stainless steel, uh -huh. um, or another renewable resource. So um, it would be relatively cost in effect, cost effective to implement. Um, okay. Question? Yes. Oh, so this would only power like electronic supplies in the RV. the electronic appliance in the vehicle itself. Yes, uh, we're so not like replacing. We're not making a hybrid RV or anything. You're good. Yeah, you're you're not actually using. You're not making a Volt version of uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the RV. Yeah. Okay. Yes. How fast do the winds have to be going to produce like an efficient amount of energy through the wind turbine? 10, well, 10, 10, 10, 10 miles an hour. 10 miles an hour to get it started, but it, like, you know, it would definitely depend on how much electricity you're using at the time. I mean, 10 miles per hour may be enough to use a couple of things, but if you're using all the electronics appliances at once... You need around 65 miles per hour for that. For that. So in other words, you would, you would charge the battery while you're driving cross-country? And then you would use the battery while you're, you know, staying overnight in an RV park or whatatever. Which and is charge also, it again as you're going. Which is also one of the reasons why we decided not to use solar panels, because usually, you know, RVs are used for cross-country trips, and you're not always necessarily driving good in the day. You also have a lot of night driving. Uh, you obviously, you guys have seen an induction battery, where you crank it up oh, yes. in order to, uh, to to light, you know, for for the battery <coughs> to be lit. This this would kind of be sort of like a wind powered induction device yeah. where instead of your instead of the mechanical energy from your arm you get it from the wind you get so. it from the wind right? yeah okay that, that's something that yeah seems to be very popular nowadays uh, converting mechanical into electrical energy I think one of the other problems that we might have to run into is noise we have to find a way to keep it silent but also I mean while you're driving at these speeds there is already noise around you right when, when just driving the highway or wherever you are <laughs> right but i do think that it would be possible to make it you know more silent right or to a degree okay any other questions